Welcome, dear friends, to the service for Sunday, the 14th of April, the third Sunday of Easter. And I pray that we will all be blessed as we share in this time together. Looking at the parish, the birthdays, the 17th of April, Tandalweto Mokude, the 20th of April, Tristan Walker. We do wish you both very happy birthdays and pray that the year ahead will be truly blessed. Anniversaries on the 17th of April, John and Margie Shaw celebrate their wedding anniversary. Congratulations and we do pray that there would be many more to come. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Collect for the second Sunday after Easter. Risen Christ, you revealed yourself to the disciples and calmed their fears. Meet us in our uncertainties and walk with us into the new life you bring. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us, as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name, and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the, all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. 
and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 4 Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. When I was hard-pressed, you set me free. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. Sons of men, how long will you turn my glory to my shame? How long will you love what is worthless and seek after lies? Know that the Lord has shown me his wonderful kindness. When I call to the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble and do no sin. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices that are right and put your trust in the Lord. There were many who say, Who will show us any good? The light of your countenance, O Lord, has gone from us. Yet you have given my heart more gladness than they have when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's reading comes to the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what will be has not yet been known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. All who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. Sin is lawlessness. But you know that He appeared so that He might take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. No one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear the word of the Lord. The good news is proclaimed in the 24th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at verse 36. Glory to Christ our Saviour. While the two were telling them this, Suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were terrified, thinking they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you alarmed? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said this and showed them his hands and his feet. They still could not believe, so they were full of joy and wonder. So he asked them, Have you anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of cooked fish, which he took and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the very things that I told you about. While I was still with you, everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms, had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, This is what is written, The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death, three days later, and in his name the message about repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations.
beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Shalom. Once upon a time there lived a very wise queen who ruled over a large powerful country. The wise queen was always doing things to teach her people to live in peace. One day the wise queen announced that there would be a contest to see who could create the most beautiful painting which portrayed peace. Many great paint painters from all over the world sent the queen their paintings. One of the many paintings was a masterpiece which depicted a magnificent calm lake which perfectly mirrored the peacefully towering snow-capped mountains. Above the mountains was a clear blue sky with just a few fluffy clouds. The picture was perfect. Almost everyone who saw the painting was convinced that it was the best portrayal of peace and it was sure to be chosen by the wise queen as the winner. However, when the queen announced the winner, everyone was shocked. The painting which won the prize had mountains as well, but they were rugged and bare. The sky looked very angry, and lightning streaked through the ominous clouds. This scene did not look at all peaceful. It looked like the artist had made a mistake and painted a viscous storm instead of peace. But... If anyone bothered to look closely at the painting, they would see a tiny bush growing in the cracks of the rugged mountain rock. In the bush, Mother Bird had built her nest. In the midst of the rush of an angry storm, the bird sat calmly on her nest. The wise queen understood that peace is born in places where you would least expect it. Peace is born in the midst of all the chaos. Peace calms the troubled heart. Peace, real peace, is also a state of mind, a way of being, a way of doing, which breaks out amid turmoil. A mother bird's calm, despite her chaotic, dangerous surroundings, is the embodiment of peace. Calmly, lovingly, caring for those around us in the midst of a chaotic, tumultuous times, despite the dangers or the apparent hopelessness, to live without fear, sorry, to love without fear is a way of being in the world that breaks out in the strangest of places. Peace is a way of being, a way of doing in a world which all too often appears to be bereft of the possibility of peace. Shalom, a Hebrew word, an Arini, a Greek word, both of which we generally translate as peace. Well, our modern understanding of peace often begins and ends with seeing the word peace simply as a noun. But both our Hebrew and our Greek ancestors understood shalom and arini as both a noun and perhaps more importantly as a verb. Sadly, we all too often read the word peace only as a noun describing the absence of conflict, war, violence, trouble or unease. While the word shalom as a noun does indeed refer to the absence of these things, it also refers to the presence of completeness or wholeness. Shalom and Irene are not just nouns, they are also verbs. In Hebrew, shalom is understood as the verb to make complete, to repair, or to restore, or to make whole. Our ancestors understood that life is complex. Life is a multitude of complexities, relationships and situations. When something is out of alignment or missing, our shalom breaks down. When warring parties or nations are out of alignment and war breaks out, Peace is, not just, peace is made not just by refraining from violence, but by attending to what is missing in the relationships, attending to the well-being of one another, and working together for one another's benefit. That means for the benefit of people who were once our enemies. 
When the anonymous gospel storytellers who heralded the birth of Jesus as Irene, they did so because Jesus' followers saw Jesus as the restorer of wholeness, because he brought peace, not only among the nations, tribes and families. Jesus brought peace with the one in whom we live and move and have our being, the one who dwells in, with, through and beyond us all. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, but the kind of peace I give you is not like the world's peace. Do not let your hearts be distressed. Do not be fearful. If you listen to the news or tune into the media of any kind, you will hear of war and rumours of wars. We all know there is no peace in Afghanistan or in the Gaza, which allow, although it dominates the news, it is just one of many nations which has no peace. We also know that our profit-driven greed and self-centeredness is at war with the earth, the only planet we have. The ravages of climate change versus the mighty dollar and our reluctance to repair and restore, to make whole our relationship to the earth, are writ large across our news screens. As followers of Jesus, we are called to peace, which is to repair, to restore to complete, to make whole. To peace, it is a daunting task, but the restoration, the completedness, the peace we long for requires us to understand peace as more than just a noun describing a state of being. Shalom, Irene, peace, salam, needs us to embody these words as verbs by restoring, bringing, making shalom, making Irene, making peace, making salam. But in our own state of incompleteness, in the absence of shalom in our being, we are afraid. Afraid of putting ourselves on the line. Afraid to follow Jesus into our Jerusalems. Afraid to trust in our own power to resist. Afraid to say no to our overlords. Afraid to abandon the power's empire. Afraid to risk what's ours. Afraid of the storms which rage all around us. Afraid of trusting the peace which is within each of us. Afraid to put our faith in a God who is love. We are afraid of the unfamiliar. We know the contours of commerce with its violence and its unfettered greed. We've grown accustomed to the suffering. We trust the untrustworthiness of the powerful. We learned to live with the evils of our systems. Better the devil we know than the devil we don't know. And yet the image of that mother bird tending her nest among the rocks and ravages of the storm continues to compel us. The promise of peace breaking out in our chaos, the desire for wholeness continues to allure us. Jesus' commandment to do to others what you would have them to do to us, to you, continues to inspire us. The peace you have left us with, dear Jesus, may not be the kind of peace the world gives, but surely it is the kind of peace which calms all fear. Do not let your hearts be distressed. Do not be fearful. Shalom, the kind of peace which surpasses our understanding, breaks out when together we find the courage to set aside all fear. Jesus said, Those who love me will be true to my word, and other God will love them. And we will come to them and make our dwelling peace with them. Come, O God, who is love. Dwell with us, in us, through us, and beyond us. Let the hopes and dreams of our ancestors move in, with, and through us. Do not let our hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Let peace break out in the most unlikely of places. Let us begin by recognizing the peace which lies within. 
paying attention to this gift of peace within us, empowers us to love our enemies by tending to their well-being so that friend and foe alike can be restored, made complete and made whole. Let the peace which lives within us empower us to be peacemakers, doers of peace, bringers of peace, lovers of peace, restorers of wholeness. Shalom, Irene, peace, salam, in the name and for the sake of the one who is our lover, beloved and love itself. Shalom. Let us pray. Faithful Father, this world lacks grace and so often steals our peace. But you are the God of peace, peace that transcends our understanding, peace that is deeper and more lasting than anything the world can offer. Lord, you call your church to dwell in the darkness, to shine your light in this hurting and distressed world. Leading your church is not an easy task. May our leaders find rest in the knowledge that you are not surprised by the circumstances of the world. You are Lord of over all, and you are always in control. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, lead us to Shalom, to the peace, wholeness, and connection that is possible when we truly rely on you. When we can't understand the what of what is going on, we can still praise you for the who of who you are. You are still near. Your promises are still true. Your love is still unconditional. Your grace is still amazing. Your timing is still perfect. Your peace is still ours. Prince of Peace, our all-knowing, unchangeable Father, fill us to the overflow. Amen.
We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, He stretched out His hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you, a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chain of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you, when you do this, do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank You for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by Your grace in the body of Your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
remain with us always. Amen. So dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.